Everything really depends upon the water in, in Manitou Beach. It's, uh, it's so unique. It's a mineral water that um, contains an abundance of different minerals. It's buoyant so that people can relax in it and float around, bob around. And so it's great for rheumatism, sufferers and so forth because they're able to move their limbs without really carrying any body weight. The buoyancy, of course, is unique, not uh, found in most waters. It's so unique that I'm not sure that most people really fully appreciate it until they're in the water. And then, you, you know, they'll say, oh, look at me. I never could swim and now I can float, you know, so. At one time, in its heyday, which would be the late teens into the 20s and into the early 30s, uh, it rivaled Banff and Jasper as a, as a place of attraction that people came to. And they used to actually send trains here on the CNR and the whole carloads would come here from Edmonton or from Winnipeg, unload, and uh, the community would get together and in their cars of the day would bring them out to Manitou Beach and they would stay either overnight or over the, for the weekend or perhaps longer, get on, back on the train and head back. This is before my time uh, when they really yeah, did most of that. And the beach was, um, was privately owned, really. There were, there were two uh, homesteaders that uh, set this up, one named McLaughlin, one named Evenson. And so the, this, uh, the beach was divided on an east-west basis in everybody's mind. The west beach being McLaughlin, the east beach being Evenson. And it developed along those lines with big swimming pools at each end, dance halls. One time we had three dance halls, dancing was a big thing. And that's of course before the days of TV and computers and all those things, so you danced. Entrepreneurs were alive and well then in Saskatchewan, and so two large swimming pools were built, one at each end of the beach. One, this end was called the Chalet Pool, C-H-A-L-E-T, and the other one was called White's Pool, and was named after uh, Mr. and Mrs. White. The war came to an end in the middle 40s. The whole society changed. People became much more worldly about where they were going, how they would get there. Nobody had ever done much traveling by airplane before that, but after that, everybody was flying somewhere. Cars were much more uh, able to go long distances and much safer and so forth. And Manitou Beach began to decline as, a, as, a, as an attraction place. Um, and, and the other resorts began to spring up and so some of the glamour and some of the, the glitz that was here disappeared. And by the, by the uh, 50s and into the 60s, uh, the beach was seriously in decline. Unfortunately, or fortunately, I guess in, in histories like that, when you look back sometimes it's more fortunate than unfortunate. A fire occurred and the old chalet pool burned down in 1983, in October of 1983. Once that happened, then that was the last of the big attractions at Manitou Beach. And it really became um, pretty desolate looking around in many ways. So it was a concern to the community and the two communities, Watrous and Manitou Beach, work very closely together in keeping Manitou Beach, both in building it and in keeping it going. But we designed what we wanted and we decided we wanted a year-round type of uh, water facility, so we designed a, a spa that would operate year-round. We decided to go on the term of a spa because we wanted to emphasize the health aspect of the water but we wanted to retain the water exactly as it was, which is the natural mineral water. We quickly found out that there was uh, no investor that was interested in doing that, that we could find in Canada, and we looked all over. There was no bank that would even consider us. So the way you raise funds is what we did. We went out to the everybody who either had an attachment to the beach or lived here or had lived here or had been here and we formed a share company and we raised enough money to get started and so we we built the spa we started out uh, 
with resounding success. Um, the first year that we had the spa operating, we had 125,000 people come into the spa, which if you just think about it, is pretty marvelous. With that in mind then, we started the second section, which was to build the hotel. And we built a mall to connect the two, and uh, we built a 60-room hotel and uh, did the same thing, went out and sold shares and borrowed a bit of money and paid it all back. And lo and behold, eventually we had it built and going and paid for it. Take just a moment to tell you a story about Lydia. Lydia um, came to the spa when I was managing the spa in, in the early years. Uh, and and came to the spa on the arms of her son and her son-in-law with with them holding her up one under each arm and her legs shuffling forward and she was badly crippled i guess with rheumatism or arthritis but badly crippled up just having a difficult time and when she went into the water of course again the, the thing you find out is your your feet and your legs and your body doesn't bear any weight the water bears the weight. And so pretty soon Lydia was bobbing around uh, in this nice warm mineral water and feeling pretty good. And so Lydia stayed, um, and I remember her well coming in um, because she had such difficulty getting in and out and so forth. And Lydia stayed uh, probably a week to 10 days at first time. And then she left, and when she left, she shuffled out. She came in on the arms of her son and her son-in-law, but when she left, she shuffled out, not walking well, but walking. She came from the southern part of the province, and uh, it wasn't very long, and Lydia was back again. Like within two weeks, Lydia was back again and spent another couple of weeks or maybe even longer there. And lo and behold, she walked into the water, uh, shuffling, but walked. At the end of the next session, she was walking not badly without the help of anybody. She came back, which I would, if my memory serves me correctly, would probably be about September or something like that, to announce that um, she would bought a car because she could now drive. And <laughs> she indeed was driving. And so Lydia eventually sold her home in her hometown and moved to uh, Watrous uh, and, and bought a piece of property, bought a house and drove back and forth and went into the spa every day. And Lydia was soon feisty Lydia, walking around, uh, happy as could be, walking, still walking with difficulty, but walking and doing really well. And like there are a number of these, these type of stories where people, because of the water, found they were able to keep going. Uh, some of them have passed on, but you know, it's been quite a few years, but nevertheless, it, it worked. Anyways, th those kinds of things have, have helped keep the spa going because, in fact, that's really what it is. It's hard to explain how proud people can be when they know they did something, and they did.